What's happening guys? It's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. I'm back out at the farm today. It's early May. I want to take advantage of doing some work in uh, one of my two rut stands that I'm creating these funnels or corridors. And uh, ground's still pretty soft right now. So as you see behind me, I've got a 110 gallon tank that I'm going to end up putting in the ground today. Uh, digging out a nice hole for it and getting it in right on the edge of a real major trail. And then uh, come back in a couple of weeks, uh, get a mock scrape set up. And then uh, I'll go ahead and finish getting this woods cleaned up where I did a lot of this work this winter. So here we are, time to get to work. The main reason that I'm going ahead and putting this water hole in near one of my tree stands is trying to attract bucks that are cruising during the rut. Uh, there's such a high demand on those bucks for not only food reserves but also water reserves that just creating an area real quick that they can stop by and get water on some known trails is a great attractant. Now it's not going to be very long. It's not like them coming into a food plot and you know feeding for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Really this is just going to be a quick stop for them but if you can set this up in between uh, known bedding areas or bedding and feeding areas and you can catch these bucks especially middle of the day and afternoon as they're cruising coming past these watering holes to get a quick drink you may put yourself in a situation to be able to uh, harvest one of these nice mature bucks uh, during the day in the rut. I got this idea from Jeff Sturgis uh, Whitetail Habitat Solutions. Uh, Jeff's just got so much knowledge of deer and the deer woods and deer behaviors. Uh, so Jeff, I thank you for that. Definitely have had a good time uh, watching deer come in and drink out of the uh, tub that I already have during last deer season while sitting in my stand and taking a look at all the trail cam pics I have of them stopping by real quick during the day and at night. I'm looking forward to putting this new tub in and being able to create a second area on the farm that I hunt that I can have uh, bucks and does stopping by to get drinks uh, during the day. At Tractor Supply, I found the uh, stock tank that I was looking for. It's 110 gallons, it's black, it's heavy duty, right around $100, uh, well worth the money to go ahead and create a water source near my tree stand. I'm taking advantage of the soft ground in May after a lot of spring rains we've had to make it a little bit easier to dig by hand. I'm actually putting this water hole in an area that I can't get a backhoe back into. Uh, so I'm going to have to go in with axe and pick and shovel, uh, square point and a round point and a steel rake. I'm going to have to use a little bit of sweat to go ahead and uh, get this dug into the ground. When I end up setting up the tub itself, the first thing that I do is try and orient it in an area 20 yards or so away from my tree stand uh, where I'm gonna be able to get a shot if the deer come in and get a drink. Uh, so trying to set up the tub is really your first uh, plan of attack. Where are you gonna put it? How are you gonna enter into your tree stand so you're not gonna be walking past this tub? You may be able even to set up this water hole so that you can create some different stands uh, to hunt during different wind directions. After setting the tub in the orientation that I want, I end up taking a square point shovel and I cut into the earth about six inches around that tub on the outside just to make a pattern. I then pull that tub back and go ahead and begin to get my pick. And I will pick away that top layer of vegetation, moss, grass, roots, whatever it is, and pull that back. Oftentimes, uh, all the big roots that are there near the surface, I have an ax with me, so I've got to cut some of those roots out. And then I begin to take some of that vegetation and the mat of roots that I have and throw it off to the side. Really, this is one of the most difficult parts because there's such a mass of roots in there that it's really difficult to go ahead and get that out. Once I've got that whole surface area of roots and grasses and vegetation out of the way, then I go ahead and start using the pick 
to get away as much soil as I can and then I go in with a square point and the round point shovel and I start shoveling that soil out. And I don't pile it in one area as I throw the soil and the rock out. I kind of distribute it 360 degrees around the area that I'm going to be going ahead and digging the hole. Uh, number one is I want to be able to rake a lot of that back in on the sides of the tub so if I spread it around the tub it's easier to rake instead of having to do more work shoveling. The other reason is that uh, I put clover on the new soil that's formed right there and that clover helps to build roots back in the soil again, uh, prevent erosion and it also allows the deer to come in and uh, they're attracted to a little bit of feed. I'm not putting a ton of clover in there, it's not like a big food plot, it's just a little bit of clover on the outside edge where the loose soil is. What's really important is not putting this water trough or water hole near existing water supplies, whether it's a spring, whether it's a ditch, a swamp, a stream, a creek. You want to go ahead and put this water hole in an area where there's no other readily available water source. What that allows you to do is attract any deer that are passing by to your actual stand location to get a drink. And once they're used to it being there, you'll find that they change some of their patterns where they stop by to get a drink on their way to and from bedding or feeding areas. And it's a great opportunity for you to be able to see these deer more often in your stand and also to go ahead and get an idea of what deer are out there by seeing them on your trail cam because they're coming in to get a drink. As I continue to dig and pick my way down into the soil, it's definitely not easy work. I definitely try to make sure I keep the walls as vertical as possible so that I don't end up having to do more digging when I end up dropping the actual tub into the hole itself. Usually uh, I find out that you're going to run into shale or bedrock in upstate New York. Uh, I definitely do not put these water holes on the top of ridges because you end up getting into shale three, four, or five inches and there's no way you're going to dig a tub down that's two feet deep uh, when you got to dig through 18 inches of shale. The hole that I'm digging here near this tree stand, fortunately, I got probably about 90% of the way down into the hole before I ran into shale. But that last three to four inches was tough. Definitely old man arms at 52. I was tired and had to take plenty of breaks. Took me about two and a half hours from beginning to end to go ahead and get the hole dug and get the tank dropped back into the hole that I created. Whee! After dropping the tub down into the hole and making sure that it's even with the soil level or a little bit below it, I then hop down into the tub with my steel rake and I begin to rake uh, the soil and the rocks in towards the tub itself. I try to get as many big rocks as I possibly can down in the space in between the tub and the soil wall that I have. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of these rocks because I want to keep as much soil as possible near the surface so that when I get done it's easier to rake this soil and actually I can plant some clover or some grass up around the edge to go ahead and get roots back in place as quickly as possible. Once I get to the point where I've got most of the soil raked up around the edge, I go ahead and make sure it's compacted because you know that soil is going to sink and I continue to rake the soil in and compact it and continue to do that until I get to a point where I feel that the soil is really not going to settle a ton more. I then go ahead and get up and begin to go ahead and rake around the edge getting rid of all the big rocks and then just walk around to make sure that it looks like it's level with the surface and it's not sticking up so it might spook deer that are coming in to get a drink. Once I'm done prepping the tub in the ground, uh, I go ahead and uh, get some big Rubbermaid containers with tops. I've got a couple big fat, uh, five gallon drinking containers. I fill them up with water at the well at the farm and I go ahead and put them in the back of the buggy and I drive out to the actual water hole itself. Got the rain helping me out a bit today. Deer management on a budget. I don't have some huge water container, but I got coolers. I got water containers from the camper. I got five gallon buckets, but the nice thing is they all have tops. So that as I'm driving down the road, I don't have water splashing out everywhere. Need some windshield wipers for this buggy today. 
I try to create an area where I can at least back that buggy up in between some trees so I can get the tailgate of the buggy right over top of the actual water hole itself. So all I have to do is tip those heavy Rubbermaid containers over and it drops that water right down into the actual water hole itself. Usually it takes two or three trips to get this done, but the first time here I'm trying to get this water hole filled uh, as much as I possibly can, knowing that any spring rains are gonna help continue uh, to raise the water level in that hole as well. One thing that's really important is to make sure you're not using any chlorinated water. Make sure you're using well water, spring water, or even if you have to, go to a, a spring uh, that's around or a creek and go ahead and fill up your containers. One of the last things that I do is go ahead and find a big stick to throw down inside that. And the reason that I put a, you know, a stick or a log two, three, four inches around is so that if there's any rodents or any other small mammals that fall down into it, uh, they have a way to get out. The last thing you want to do is have some rotten carcass in that water that's tainting the water. That's a real good way to prevent deer from wanting to come in and drink out of that tub. I will tell you though that the tub that I've had set up for an entire year already, the deer don't care if it's muddy. They don't care if it's discolored. They don't care if there's mosquitoes in it. Uh, I go in simply once a year, you know, usually when the ice is off um, in March and I go ahead and clean out any excess leaves or sticks or debris that's in there, uh, make sure that the stick that I have in there to allow animals to get out uh, is still in good shape and not rotted. And I find that spring rains with a 110 gallon tank uh, tend to keep that thing from evaporating over the summertime. Uh, we had a pretty dry summer last July and August. I really thought I was gonna have to go in there in the summertime and fill that up again with some big Rubbermaid containers and I never ended up having to do it. It's still filled right to within two or three inches of the surface and that's just from the rainwater that occurs. Uh, I will find as well too that because it's under the forest canopy, for both of the water troughs I have, tend to have a lot less evaporation. I would imagine it'd be a whole lot different putting it out in a field, but the last thing you wanna do with a water trough anyways is put it out in a food source because deer get so much of their water from clover and grasses and other herbaceous vegetation as it is, that if you put that water trough right in the middle of a field, the deer aren't gonna use it because they have a readily available water source from the foods that they're eating there. Uh, I try to clear out some of the area uh, with some of the big sticks and vegetation to make sure the deer have an open path to come in from multiple directions to be able to get to this water source. Uh, deer are creatures that will use the easiest path they can to get to areas that they want to go. Uh, they're expending less energy and thus being able to open up some of these areas or lanes or funnels for them to walk through uh, may increase the number of deer that end up coming to your water source uh, to go ahead and get something to drink. Uh, buck are pretty leery about being cornered. So if you can go ahead and create a situation in which you've got all the debris cleared out, there's no trees that are blocking them into that area, and it's a little bit open so that they can see, they feel a little bit more comfortable putting their head down in the water and taking a drink. If you don't do that and you create a situation in which they feel enclosed, the mature buck are not gonna come there to drink and all this work that you're doing is for naught. I also like to go ahead and put up a grapevine mock scrape and a trail camera in proximity to the water hole that I create. I'd like to be able to create a mock scrape in an area that my trail cam can cover both the actual mock scrape itself and the water hole. Uh, it's amazing to me the amount of deer that I have on video the last couple of years, especially a lot of mature buck that I don't see on any of my other trail cams, but because of the fact that I've got a water hole and a great vine mock scrape right next to each other, a lot of these buck end up coming in and hitting the water hole and then the mock scrape or hitting the mock scrape and then the water hole and really gives me a better idea of what deer I have out there in the woods. So it took me about two and a half hours today get this thing filled up, clean out all the understory here. This place where I put the water hole and I'm only going to hunt during the rut is in between two fields, a hay field and a corn field. And it is absolutely littered with great rubs. Like I'm talking, there's over 75 rubs within about 200 square yards here. So the watering hole is done. I went ahead and filled it up this morning. I planted clover around the outside edge and I cleared the understory. 
so that the deer have some easy walking paths coming through these channels that I've created. There's my tree stand right there. Another channel coming from the hay field towards me and over to the cornfield. Got another open lane for them to come through here and then out into the cornfield. Work's done. Don't have to get in here again other than putting in a mock scrape. And uh, I'm excited to let this settle all summer and uh, not come in here other than to check some SD cards every once in a while until the rut. Yeah, baby. My ultimate goal in creating this water hole near my tree stand is to be able to attract buck that are thirsty during the daytime uh, in the heat of the rut. When these buck are cruising looking for doe, uh, obviously their energy resources are being used up, but a lot of times many of these buck go right through feeding, but they still need water every single day. You're going to catch these buck during the daytime hitting these water sources, especially middle of the day and afternoon as they're getting up from bedding and beginning to cruise when it's a little bit warmer in temperature during the day. And my hope is that as I get ready for this fall, that the watering hole that I'm setting up is gonna give me an opportunity to shoot a nice mature buck on the farm. Hopefully you guys learned some stuff from this video that's gonna help you on your own private property. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Looking forward to talking to you guys very soon. See ya.